The Depression and the New Deal have shaped the course of America up through present day, testing the roots of the Republic and dramatically expanding the role of government, not only in the economy, but in the individual lives of all citizens. What was the New Deal meant to achieve? What did it achieve? What else might have been achieved? All these questions are answered in Chapter 25. The seemingly robust economy of the late 1920s had several fatal flaws. Declining demand and investment, ailing industries, a hurting farm sector, and overvalued stocks. The October 29th stock market crash quickly brought economic implosion, high unemployment, and decreased productivity. Herbert Hoover basically did very little to combat this crisis. As president, his popularity plummeted, especially after federal troops violently expelled World War I veterans of the Bonus Army from an area outside of Washington, D.C. Franklin D. Roosevelt had very little trouble defeating Hoover in 1932. FDR began his presidency at full tilt in the first 100 days. He immediately declared a federal bank holiday, which restored much of the consumer confidence in the banking system and prevented the collapse of many banks. Then he launched the first of many programs designed to restore the economy and alleviate human suffering. The Agricultural Adjustment Act, also known as the AAA, and the National Industrial Recovery Act, or NIRA, were created to reverse the fortunes of the nation's farmers and the industrial businesses, respectively. The AAA had some notable success, but the NIRA, or NIRA, was nearly a complete failure. Still, though, at least it was an attempt at improvement, which was more than Hoover had ever offered. Many programs and much money was spent on jobs and relief for the unemployed. Such programs as the Civilian Conservation Corps, or the CCC, and the Works Progress Administration, or WPA, provided jobs for millions of people, paying them for public work projects like constructing libraries, uh, hospitals, building trails, and creating ranger stations. The government also helped labor through the passage of the Wagner Act, which gave unions the right to organize and bargain collectively. This sparked a wave of unionization throughout many industries, notably the automobile industry and the steel industry. In his second term, FDR got important legislation through Congress. The most notable was the landmark Social Security Act of 1935 that provided old age pensions and unemployment insurance, both of which are still active today. FDR's New Deal policies encountered opposition from both the right and the left. Conservative businessmen and politicians in both parties formed the Liberty League. On the left were populists such as Huey P. Long and Father Charles E. Coughlin, in addition to a revived Socialist Party. However, by the second half of the decade, Roosevelt had forged a stable, formidable coalition ranging from organized labor to African Americans.